What is going on everyone? My name is Jared and today my OnePlus 6 got here. You can tell by the shady plastic wrapping and uh, tape all the way around the outside. Anyway, I've been a fan of OnePlus since the very beginning. I actually won one of their first devices, the OnePlus One in sandstone black. And since then I had an affinity for the OnePlus brand, what they were doing, and I really liked what they were trying to achieve. Since then, many things have changed since the OnePlus One. Prices went up, the devices changed, and also the whole ecosystem of smartphones has changed drastically. So they've been trying to keep up with the times with their new OnePlus 6 that was just released. And if it wasn't for my girlfriend's birthday, I would have been down at the pop-up event that they had in New York City. So anyway, let's flip this camera around. Let's see what we got in here. And if the OnePlus 6 is once again a true flagship killer. Let's get into it. So I have officially taken out my SIM card of my go-to device, the Pixel 2 XL, to put into this guy. Now, I'm committed to having this work and to trying this for a while. I also want to try the new Bullets headphones, the wireless ones as well. So that's my commitment to, to this phone right now. And from everything that's been speculated about this device is that it's really holding up as far as what everyone's expecting. The one biggest problem that people have been having, and it's not so much a problem as I know it was a cost-cutting strategy for OnePlus itself, was to not have wireless charging with a glass-backed device. Now that's probably my biggest problem, and I wouldn't even call it a problem because it's really not a huge deal for me. I like wireless charging, I think it's a great feature, but uh, my, Pix my favorite device, the Pixel 2 XL, didn't have wireless charging, and I managed to live just fine without it. So, we have our two cases, which came in the bundle. We have the black sandstone, to go back to the roots, and the red silicone, because black and red can't be that combo. So here we have it. We got the 128 gig mirror black version, which has the 8 gigabytes of RAM. Alright, gonna lay right there. That works. Got both cats here today. I'm checking it all out. But so obviously this was OnePlus's first glass back phone. Dual cameras, which apparently has been changing every time they've been releasing a phone. It hasn't been the same setup. If anything, this device is most similar to the 5T, their last device, which came out in the fall. Uh, same size battery. Obviously the new processor, more RAM. They also included the option for 258 gigabytes of storage, which is now sold out here in the States. I'm putting all the plastic away so we don't have any mishaps with the old cats here. So we'll get to the cases in a second. Also, there is no ingress protection that is rated on the OnePlus, yet they say that it is splash proof. Um, and if you watch teardown videos such as Jerry Rig Everything, you will know that there's actually a fair amount of ingress protection built into the phone. It's just not rated because ratings cost money to get that certified. So here we have it. First look. So you can see it does have the notch in the top. You got the factory applied screen protector, which is always super nice. And there you have the mirror black back. So let's uh, pull this guy off. My cat heard me. Okay, you can have that. Good luck. <laughs> and they stick your IMEI stickers on the back here. I'll stick that in there. You got your dash charger. You also got a case in here, but I'm gonna use one of these. You got your dash cable and your charger. So there you have it. This is that mirror black finish. You got no writing. You just got the uh, logo underneath the glass and the designed by one plus down there. So pretty elegant design. Your alert slider went from the left side to the right side, which I'm fine with. I love the alert slider because I love the toggle switch on the iPhone. And you can kind of see their big claim to fame is that horizon line, which they do have on the side of their device. So it feels much more premium. It feels like my Pixel. So the one thing I want to look at right away before I go pull this off or uh, 
turn it on, I should say, is I'm gonna put my SIM card in, wherever the SIM tray is. Can't see it, the phone is so black. LOL, problems, here it is, way up at the top. Anyway, the first part of ingress protection would be on your SIM tray. And I pulled out my Pixel 2 just for comparison's sake. So just look at the size of the gasket on the Pixel 2 XL and look at the gasket on the OnePlus. So not, certainly not quite as meaty. I would say it's probably most similar to the ingress protection on iPhones, um, which is IP67, as is the Pixel. But again, IP ratings cost money. Where did that SIM tray just go? Did you take it? Did I, oh, it's in my hand. I'm an idiot. Ha! Huh. Thought I had the uh, paper clip. So let's grab this old SIM card here, and then I'm gonna turn on the device, and I'm gonna put in my information, and uh, we'll get back to this here review. So this is dual SIM. It is not expandable memory, so you have dual SIM options. In case you have two carriers, go out of the country, whatever. We'll see if we got any juice. And we do. So that is the classic Oxygen OS boot up, a little dot. And there we have it. We're gonna boot up in here in just a second. Bam, so look at that. So this has a very high screen to body ratio. It does have the cutout at the top and you're either at one camp or the other. You either are okay with it or you're not okay with it. Uh, personally, I am impartial to it because I am really looking forward to the all screen phone and I know this is just a stepping stone to get there. So give me a second and I'm dropping my information and I'll be right back. All right, so we got all my information in. It took a little bit, it had a system update, which I know it's been having, but one thing I can say is, wow, this thing is amazingly fast. You can see how it does attract the fingerprints, but this phone, feels like the Ferrari right now of phones. It just, anything you do, even right now, I'm still downloading how many apps? 27 out of 68. I'm still downloading a ton of apps and everything is just opening up as fast as possible. And I know a lot of this has to do with the minimal animations that OnePlus puts on their phone, but still, it's fast. That's the bottom line. So. OnePlus, I'm gonna get it right off on top. <laughs> I'm gonna get it right off the bat. The OnePlus phones is basically like the law of diminishing returns, okay? And what that basically means is how much more can you add before what you add isn't worth the cost? So what I'm talking about is when you're buying a phone that's sub, I guess, $700, $800, there is going to be some trade-offs. This isn't a Samsung S9. This isn't a Pixel 2 XL. So when people compare this phone to the Pixel, which I have standing right here, um, it's not, you're not comparing the same caliber of devices, right? The best analogy I can make is this. So I'm a Mustang fan, right? I've had a Mustang for a long time. My best comparison is you can't compare a V6 Mustang to the Shelby GT500. You just can't do it. It's not the same. Yes, they're both gonna be fast, they're both gonna be good, and they're both the same similar product, but the caliber just isn't there. All right. It amazes me that a $600 phone is even coming close. The gap between OnePlus and the flagship competitors is getting closer and closer every year. To the point of, uh, I am going to do a blind shootout between these phones. The Pixel, S9, OnePlus, iPhone 10. That is going to come up. It's just taking me a long time now that I have the OnePlus 6 to actually make that video happen. A lot of coordination has to take place with just me doing all the legwork. But that is going to happen. But even to say that this phone is in the same realm as these other phones, to compare it to these and not be comparing it to say the Honor 10, the Honor View 10, uh, Huawei SEs, phones like that, which are, I guess, more budget oriented phones, goes to say something about what they're doing, right? 
Outside of that, Oxygen OS is a great skin on top of Android. I am an Android purist. That's why my Pixel has not left my side for a very long time. But Oxygen OS does come with some useful features. They do have this shelf on the side. Personally, I like Google Now being over here, but that's easily changed with a different launcher or if you root this device because it is very developer friendly, you can get uh, or do rootless pixel launch or things like that. You can easily get Google now over there. You have the swipe up gesture to get to your home screen, to get to your home screen, to get to your apps screen. You have your navigation buttons on the bottom, your clear all, your quick settings, which are pretty generic. They're not uh, compared to the Samsung, they're just not nearly as colorful. They got the dark theme going on, which this is a 1080p panel. You're not doing quad HD or anything like that. You're doing 1080p. But again, what that does is this is a very, very nice looking 1080p panel. I would almost say it's probably one of the best looking 1080p panels there is. You can see the icons kind of just float across the wallpaper. And I know that's very dark on the bottom, but again, using a the panel that's in this phone with dark colors, you can get more battery life. So you can immediately go into your settings, toggle dark mode, which I believe is under display. You can go to theme, and then you'll have dark mode, which is gonna save you on battery if you're going through a lot of apps that use white. There you go, everything is black now. Other things that you have in here, you can turn off your notch. So if you really have distaste for the notch and you just solely don't want to have it, you can turn it off, meaning that when you go home, it is now just blacked out. There you go. It's as if you have no more notch. Now, to me, I don't care. I kind of like it. I'm going to leave that on. You have your adaptive brightness. You can, I'm going to crank there you go, look at that brightness. So again, it is not gonna be the thousand nits like the new LG ThinQ uh, G7, but it is gonna be very bright. You're gonna be able to use it outdoors, indoors, whatever, you're gonna have an easy time reading it. You have your night modes, all that other stuff which you've known and love about the new screens. You also have some default screen calibration, default, sRGB, DCI-P3, adaptive, and custom. So. To be honest, I'm probably just gonna leave it on default. That works for me just fine. You can decide what apps display in full screen, which means utilize the notch space, or some of them will just not do it. A lot of, now with Android P, a lot of apps are already embracing that screen size, so you won't have to worry about it. Let's see if Google Chrome, see Google Chrome does not, I don't believe, I'll go through that, no. So the Google Chrome does not yet, but you could force it to use that by going into the settings, the Play Store does, the camera, obviously you don't see it in the viewfinder. Anything that OnePlus has made will obviously support it. Google Pay does. So obviously more and more stuff is gonna get supported for this notch display as time goes on. You have your nice alert slider, which I do really enjoy. It has always been something I liked. Now you have a nice animation that goes with it. Now OnePlus is embracing the Project Treble lifestyle. This will probably get Android P very close to release just after the Pixels because it is part of the beta. One second. Stop eating the paper, you dingus. It's like I don't feed her. Anyway, another thing we're going to talk about is the fingerprint sensor. So I do like the normal round fingerprint sensors like on the Pixel. I think it looks good, but I was actually listening to a video today about how an individual talked with the OnePlus uh, executive, representative, whatever, and the reason they did not put it as a circle is they didn't want it to look like an exclamation point. And I understand that, that's fine. If there was a little bit of differentiation between the back and the fingerprint sensor, that would have been nice because I can see myself missing that, but with a case, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Uh, they do have facial unlock. Now, again, it is certainly not as fast as, or not as secure as the iPhone 10, but it is certainly way faster. So we are going to, from lock, like this, I'll try to do it with the camera looking at it. You don't even see it unlock, that's how fast it is. But, say you are uh, a person who leaves their phone around and you have stuff that people don't wanna see. If you're sleeping, let's see, if I close my eyes, 
doesn't work with my eyes closed, but that does not mean there isn't ways around the facial unlock. It's not super secure. It's not iris scan, but it is fast. It is nice. And it's a, it's a good feature to have. Your fingerprint sensor, also OnePlus and Huawei probably have the fastest ones in the business. Just touch it, you feel a little vibration, and you're in. So that is a great fingerprint sensor in the back, in the right spot, be it a little small, still all around great. Uh, I haven't used this phone for more than five minutes, as you can see, I've just been setting it up. First impressions are pretty good. Let's see, uh, let's take a selfie here and see what we got as far as quality. So let's, uh, let's zoom in on that there. Look at that, you can see the hairs. That's the good test right there, the beard hair test, just like unbox therapy. If you can test it, sounds like a good one. So just for a comparison, I'm gonna do it with the Pixel just the same way to try to give you a comparison. Things that you're gonna lack in this camera, sorry, can't talk and take a picture. Things you're gonna lack in this camera is going to be your portrait mode. Even though you have it, all right, my cat is certainly eating everything. The pictures are relatively similar. I'm back. So people have said the OnePlus has a warmer tone when it comes to photos. Every camera is going to be different. But right off the bat, you can see that just the selfie test was very similar. And like I said, I am gonna do a blind camera test. But for being a company that is going on price as one of their key factors, Fancy things in your camera like the bokeh effect. You have it here, but it probably won't be as good as the Pixels or maybe even the Samsungs. You can shoot 4K 60 frames a second, which is a nice addition to the OnePlus 6, and it looks really smooth when you actually see it uh, in person. So that's a nice, you can also shoot slow motion video for a solid minute at 1080p. So that is also a great addition rather than just a few seconds of super slow-mo on the Samsung. But again, you have AR emoji, you have the super slow-mo, you have all these other little features or gimmicks, whatever you want to call them, added, which drives price up, all right? So what are you getting with the OnePlus? Right now, in 2018, you are getting what I would consider a 2018 phone. And what I mean by that is you have the latest Snapdragon, you have a glass back premium looking design, nice and shiny. You have everything that I would consider the framework to be a flagship. You have fingerprint scanner, full screen display, good cameras, dash charging, which is arguably one of the fastest charging technologies out there. You have a great developer community, which is something that phones, some phones never get. You also have uh, a almost stock version of Android and you have freedom really to customize and make this device really what you want. And you're also saving a good amount of money in the process. This thing will crush at benchmarks. It'll make any phone seem slow at the moment. I am waiting for the Pixel 3 and you're getting near stock. This is basically what one person said, the new Nexus of smartphones which a lot of people live and die by that name. So I highly recommend it. I'm gonna take some photos. I'm gonna go outside with this phone. I already paired my watch with it. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna go for a run. I'm gonna take some outdoor shots. I'm gonna see how they look. Really in a blind test that I took, it is hard to distinguish. And there's things about photos that I personally like, like high saturation and contrast, which I know the Pixel will beat it on, but that is a preference. And looking at photo based on detail, quality and not over sharpening or ghosting all those things this phone comes so close to being indistinguishable that it's it's right in the realm of the big guys in the industry and i think that is a testament to just how much money people are spending on smartphones as well as what your smartphone could be if you decide to let go of a few creature comforts like i said wireless charging is not a deal breaker for me Personally, it might be for some, but it would have been nice. I can live without it. The Pixel didn't have it. I lived perfectly fine. If I have it, just another thing I have that's fantastic. But it's not necessarily going to be the end-all, be-all. People may not like it if they don't have their wireless charging, their uh, um, iris scanning, things of that nature, or necessarily the top DxO-marked camera. 
I haven't seen this on DX Omark, and one thing to mention while I take these cases, or open these cases, is that companies like Samsung, Apple, Google, they work with DX Omark to test their cameras against their battery of test. So they actually see exactly what their camera is gonna go through, the exact test, and they could almost tune and tweak it. And I'm not claiming anyone cheats on this, but they know what's coming and they know what DxO Mark is looking for. And in everyday real world performance of going out taking photos, sure, this phone will obviously beat the OnePlus in low light due to its mechanical aperture and that awesome technology. The Pixel 2 is probably gonna blow it away in HDR and bokeh effect due to the AI processing. But if you're just going out taking a photo and not getting fancy, you're gonna have a hard time telling apart the difference in all these phones. So this has always been my favorite, the Sandstone. This was what the first phone that I had of OnePlus had. I still love it. It's a slim style case. You do have the top open, the side and the bottom, so it's not uber protective. And you basically don't have much of a lip when you set it down on a table. So there's that one. My new favorite since uh, I think it was the OnePlus 5 was this red silicone. So this red silicone, OnePlus, obviously, all the red stuff here is known for that. This red silicone has like a soft little Alcaterra feel. Reminds me a lot of the Apple cases and as well as the Samsung silicone case right here. You've got the embossed logo on the back, which is super nice. And this red and black combo is going to look sweet. And there you go. This has a little more protection, covers the top. Still leaves that bottom open for your headphone jack and USB-C charging. There you have it. So it gives you a nice little contrast and a little indented spot for your alert slider. Anyway, this has been my uh, unboxing and my talk about the OnePlus 6. It doesn't have expandable storage. It doesn't have wireless charging. It doesn't have an official IP rating. It is splash proof. It does have the fastest charging. It is a damn fast phone, period. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I am gonna drop my referral code for OnePlus in case any of you are looking to buy a device, buy accessories, use a referral code, it helps me out, it helps you out, you get a coupon, and uh, I will see you in the next video, and it'll probably be about the OnePlus. So, see you then.